Let's be honest, we all know why you're watching this video. You want to make more money as an Uber driver and as a Lyft driver. So let's skip the small talk and get right into it. In this video, I'm going to give you seven ways to make more money as a driver. Number one, focus on events, not just peak hours. Now we all know Friday and Saturday nights, you're going to make a good amount of money. And then in addition, morning and evening commutes. However, if you drive during events, you can sometimes make not only the same amount as those peak hours, but even more. I remember when I first started driving in Boston, they had a big day, excuse me, two days was actually, Tuesday and Wednesday, tons of graduations for all the colleges. And guess what? Those surges were off the charts. One, because guess what? There's not a lot of drivers during a Tuesday at 1 p.m. So I was one of the few drivers. And two, just because there were so many people, the surges were ridiculous. And if you think about it, there's gonna be tons of drivers on a Friday night. However, let's say there's a random baseball game in your area on a Wednesday night. I guarantee you're gonna make probably more money during that baseball game when it closes out compared to a Friday night, because there's gonna be fewer drivers, surges are higher. If let's say there's a massive two-day music festival on Saturday and Sunday during the day, drive during those periods. I promise you, if you focus on events in addition to peak hours, you're gonna make way more money. Number two, focus on the pockets. What I mean by this is when you're driving on that map, you will see, you know, different, sometimes squares or sections, some of them kind of colored in a certain way that shows you where these surges are the highest. Of course, it sounds like Captain Obvious, but this is important. Make sure you always go to the surge pockets. Two big pro tips on top of this. One is I actually turn off the app as I'm going to that surge pocket. The reason why is, yeah, I might be able to get a ride quicker if I leave the app on, but it might not be a good surge. And in addition, for a lot of bonuses, if you're trying to get a specific bonus, there's usually some type of acceptance rate involved. So if I deny a bunch of rides, I might not get that bonus. So I will turn off the app, drive, you know, whatever is 10 minutes, 15 minutes, doesn't matter, to that surge pocket. Then I'll turn on the app to make sure I ensure the highest surge. The second big pro tip, and I've talked about this before, is if you are driving in a small area and you can commute to a big city, absolutely do so. Even if, you know, it's like say an hour and a half drive there and back. I used this example before that I grew up in Western Massachusetts. If let's say you wanna go from Springfield, Mass to Boston, it's probably being honest, maybe about four hours round trip. But I promise you, if you do that four hour round trip, you're gonna make way more money than if you just stayed in Springfield, Mass or Western Mass and tried to get any ride you could. You're way better off driving two hours there, even though you're not making any money to then make a crushing amount in Boston and then driving two hours back than just staying where you are. So in both cases, always, always, always look in your state in general. This is what I would do. Look in your state, figure out, okay, where are the highest surge pockets and then drive to those. Number three, analytics. This is honestly my favorite one by far that a lot of drivers don't do. I'm a former accountant and I'm not making this up. When I first started driving, I actually had a spreadsheet. I would record exactly when I started driving, when I stopped driving, and I tried to figure out like, okay, when is the best time to start driving? When is the best time to stop? When am I gonna make the most amount of money? Now, of course, like I said before, the peak hours and events. However, there's a lot of unique things that I noticed. For example, and I've said this before as well, that when I was driving in Boston, as we all know, most people get to work hopefully before 9 a.m., right? After 9 a.m., a lot of the morning commute surges drop off immediately. And I noticed that, let's say if I pick somebody up at 8 a.m., right? It would be, like say, a 1.3 surge. So I pick them up, and typically the rides would go from a residential area to the main city. So I pick them up, and dealing with the morning commuting traffic and everything, I could really do one more ride. I drop them off at, let's say, 8.30, 8.45. By that point, there's really no more big lucrative rides. However, I realized looking at the analytics, if I waited to, let's say 825, I think 820 was my big cutoff. Let's say 820, 825. If I waited, turn the app off, 
turn it back on and I waited till 820 or 825, it might be a 1.7 surge or a 2x surge. And let's be honest, from 8 to 9 a.m., I realized there's really only one ride I could do because it was going from the residential area to the city. So I was way better off waiting actually till 820 and then doing a ride because the surge would be significantly higher because a lot of people are like, oh shoot, you know, like, I gotta get to work, I gotta get to work. And then they pay whatever they can because they don't want to be late. Huge pro tip as well. If you are on the Lyft app, and it doesn't even matter if you're driving for Lyft or Uber or both, doesn't matter. If you go on the Lyft app, you can actually see on their analytics exactly when the best hours to drive are. And in addition, like I mentioned earlier, they will sometimes show you events that are happening in your area. Number four, the off hours. I'm not gonna lie, uh, the idea of doing this just seems miserable to me, but I know some drivers who one, love doing it, and two, made an absolute crushing of how much they made. When I'm talking about the off hours, I'm really talking about around 4 a.m. to 10 a.m. I know so many drivers who did this and they loved it. They, they're like, hey, I get, done with, I get done with work at 10 a.m. I'm done for the whole day. I can do whatever I want. So they would wake up at 3.30 a.m., just get ready to go and go from four to 10. The reason why a lot of people are going to the airport so they can make a good amount of money then. And then you drive for a few hours and then boom. Now it's seven-ish a.m., you're now doing the morning commutes. So many drivers I know made a really good amount of money saying, hey, I actually prefer just doing 4 a.m. to 10 a.m. than any other period because you're super easy rides and you make a really good amount of money. And I heard this from a lot of drivers as well. They found the tips were higher. Maybe that's because you are doing the kind of airport commute. So maybe people are more likely to tip if they are flying out and like say they're very accommodating with your luggage and whatnot. Honestly, I don't know, but maybe that's the psychology. But I'm telling you, a lot of drivers love this. I never did it. I... I I, I can't do it because, again, the idea of waking up that early and driving for six hours, even though it's only six hours for the shift, I just couldn't do it. But I'm telling you, so many drivers swear by it. Number five, check the bonuses. I don't know why a lot of drivers don't do this. I, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Like, I cannot tell you how many drivers I've talked to that are like, yeah, you know, I just kind of drive. And I'm like, well, do you check the bonuses? Do you check what's going on this weekend? And you're like, nah, you know, I just drive when I kind of feel like it or... Nah, you know, I'm, I'm going to drive and then I'll make my money and then I'll cash out or whatever. Check the bonuses, especially if it's around events. Like I said earlier, this is a great kind of combination of two pro tips. For example, I was talking to a lot of drivers in Vegas. And for me, I love electronic music. As most of you know, I'm a DJ. And so EDC or EDC Las Vegas is a crazy time in Vegas. And I know every single EDC, I can't remember how it works. It's different from year to year but they always give the drivers a bonus. Like Uber and Lyft say, hey, if you do, I think seven rides, cause it's typically from the Las Vegas Strip to the Speedway. So they typically have some type of bonus saying, all right, if you do seven round trip drives, we'll give you an extra like $500 or a really, really good bonus. Now, if you're just gonna drive on a Friday and Saturday night in Vegas during that time, and you're not checking the bonuses or anything, well, you're gonna miss out on an insane amount of money. Always check the apps to see, is there any bonuses going on? Is there anything unique going on? Because again, one, sometimes they're paired around events. So you wanna check on that. And like I said too, not only you can make a great bonus, but events, super high surges. And two, just in general, let's say there's a random week and they say, hey, you know what? We're gonna guarantee this amount if you do this and this. If you, let's say, do, do this amount of rides, we're gonna give you this amount of money as a bonus always check the bonuses and that leads me into the next point sign up with both apps i get so frustrated with the drivers like say i'm in an uber or a lyft and i'm talking to the driver and they're like yeah you know what? i just you know uber's kind of frustrating because i'm just not getting paid as much as i used to they're cutting my rates and i'm like yeah i'm like well what about lyft is lyft any better for you in this area and they're like no 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 i just drive for uber i'm like wait a minute so you're telling me you can sign up with Lyft for free, they might give you a better bonus structure. They might pay you more and you're not even willing to try it out. Like that to me makes no sense. Always sign up with both apps. I don't know why more drivers, I just don't get it to me. It, like if let's say Lyft says, hey, you know what? You have to pay 50 bucks a month to sign up with us. Then I'd understand. I'd be like, you know what? I get it. It's it's costing you money, but it's free to sign up to sign up with both apps. 
And as we all know as well, there's no quota. It's not like Lyft or Uber says, you know what? If you don't do 10 rides in a month, we're going to deactivate your account. That doesn't exist. So if you're complaining that Uber or Lyft doesn't pay as much, why not try out the other app? This happened to me. I remember when I first started driving, I really only did, I, I remember how it, how it worked because it was this whole back and forth thing. I initially signed up with Lyft and I was like, hey, Lyft is paying great. I'm, I'm good with Lyft. Then I was like, you know what? I might as well sign up with Uber. Like, what? Like, why not? It's free. Started driving for Uber and I was like, wait, this is actually paying more than Lyft. I only did Uber. Then it went back to Lyft and I started realizing after comparing both, you know what? I'm actually making more with Lyft. And then in addition, like I said earlier about bonuses, sometimes Lyft and Uber would go back and forth with bonuses. One weekend, it would be all bonuses for Lyft. I only drive for Lyft. Another weekend, and before Uber, I would only drive for Uber. I remember there was one day, this was a great day in Boston. St. Patrick's Day in Boston is always crazy, as you can imagine. And I feel like that Lyft and Uber was kind of checking what each other was doing because I got an alert saying, hey, if you drive on St. Patrick's Day for Boston, it was like on a Saturday. So great time to drive, crazy parade and everything. We're guaranteeing 30 an hour, minimum 30 an hour guaranteed. And then the other app said, you know what? We're actually going to give you guys 35 an hour. And then I got another text like five minutes later. And the other app was like, you know what? We're going to give you 40 an hour. So they were almost competing with each other. And guess who wins when you're with both apps? You. Number seven, referrals. I know a lot about business and accounting, like I said earlier. I am still in shock of how much you can make if you just sign up another driver. And I'm not exaggerating. I'm very honest in my videos. There was even a period of time where I was making between, not exaggerating, ten dollars and $20,000 a year extra by just signing up other drivers. Granted, some of my YouTube videos in the past went viral for Uber and Lyft. You know, this is a new channel I started compared to my main one. But back in the day, I was one of the few Uber and Lyft YouTubers. So I signed up so many drivers. There were even some days where I'd wake up and would say, hey, Mark, you know what? You signed up two, just two drivers through Uber because of their location. We're giving you $1,000 for each referral. Here's two grand. Thank you for supporting Uber. And I was like, wait, I didn't do really anything, right? I'm telling you, if you do anything related to social media, if you're on TikTok, YouTube, you know, Facebook even, you know, however you want to do it, if you sign people up, it's a great way. And it's also usually a good way to have kind of a two-way street. For example, I know people who've done this, let's say in Boston or in LA or in New York or Miami, wherever you are, there's usually a two-way street where it's like, okay, if you sign somebody up, they get $500, you get $500. Talk to your friends and say, hey, you know what? If you sign up, you get 500, I get 500. Just let's work something out. You have to do 30 rides in a month. Super easy to do. Just, just do it because we can each get $500. I mean, hey, I'll even give you half mine. So you get 750, I get 250 because you're not really doing anything, right? And I know people who did deals like that, Signing up people through Lyft and Uber is a way to make an insane amount of money really quick. And now a bonus tip that's kind of related, but kind of not. And that is start a Uber and Lyft YouTube channel. I wanted to talk about this because you'd be surprised how well Uber and Lyft videos do on YouTube. But the biggest thing is Uber and Lyft vlogs. This is the big kind of niche that no one's really kind of tackled yet, I feel like in the right way. Now for me, when it comes to these videos, they're very educational, right? I mean, I'm teaching you how to make more money as a driver. However, no one's really done it where they're like, hey, you know what? This is the Uber and Lyft vlog number 37. Here's where I drove today. Here's what happened. Here's an interesting story. People love to see and hear about Uber and Lyft stories and also to the ad revenue whole other subject for a whole other video, but the ad revenue are getting more technical. The CPM or RPM of those videos is very high. What that means is 1,000 views on YouTube is not created equal. You might get five cents for a thousand views. You might get $30 for a thousand views. It depends on the niche. A lot of factors, again, whole other subject for a whole other video. However, Uber and Lyft always performs well when it comes to the ad revenue. And no one's, in my opinion, no one's really made a channel 
where they just talk about the people they have, right? Now, of course, you don't have to even show footage. You don't, you don't even have to make it specific. You can make it very anonymous. And I know it sounds weird, but people will watch you. If you just sit there, let's say you get done with the day of driving, you just set up the phone in your car even. You know, I've done this a bunch. You set up the, the phone in the car. You say, hey, what's up, guys? So for today, I had three passengers. One was this guy, you know, he actually did IT. So I talked about IT, it was kind of fun, you know. The second person I had, they were actually, I'm not gonna lie, they had a little bit too much to drink. And you know, they were going to this party. And you just talk about what it was like driving these people around, any funny stories that you had. And I know a lot of people, when I say this, say, hey, Mark, who's gonna watch me sit in a car and just talk about what happened when I was driving? A lot of people, a lot of people will. And I promise you that this is super easy to do, right? Like you don't have to do crazy editing. You don't even have to make this this lavish production. If you just sit there and just talk, you can make an insane amount of money. Again, you have to reach a monetization threshold on YouTube, so you need at least 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 public watch hours in the last 12 months. But once you get to that, you can make a good amount of money, not just driving, but the money that you make just talking about your experiences as a driver. This is a massive niche that nobody on YouTube, I feel like has really explored and pioneered yet, and you can make an insane amount of money from the ads.